What about private information, memos, emails, that kind of thing? You can go ahead and include them in your MLA paper also. Here you can be very, uh, a little bit more general. It's not as specific uh, a rule as in the APA. So here I would say in 2016 interview. So I had an interview with Bob Lutz. So I interviewed him. So in the text, I just write it very clearly like that. Victor Gates included in his email of May 2017. So here again, this is the person and what did they do? They wrote an email and when's it from? So you want to be as specific as possible, but the big difference here is the MLA does not have a very super clear requirement on that. Rather, that's going to go inside the reference list. They just want to make sure the reader knows which reference does this belong to. When I see that you, you're citing an email from Victor Gates, I want to be able to be sure that I can find that inside your reference list. So in this case, the name is clear, Victor Gates, and it's an email. So in my reference list, you can find it. Here would be what the reference list looks like. So this is at the back of the paper. We're going to study this more in the next section we cover, but here is the Lutz. That's the person's name. Last name first, first name last. And it's a personal interview, and it is 20 April 2016. So this is quite different approach from the uh, APA approach. So here, pay attention. You've got the day, the month, and then the year. That's totally different than APA. And there's no commas in there anywhere, nothing. So very different, watch out. Look at another example here. Let me clear this off. Here we go. Gates, Victor, last name first, first name last. Message to the author, 10 May 2017 email. So period, period, see that? Period there. Email is the type. This is extra information. This is a this is the way the APA kind of functions. They want you to kind of get the overall idea rather than very, very specific rules. But again, we're not doing that this section. I'm going to look at that the next section when we talk about the reference list. But there you go. Very cool. The DOI is the Digital Object Identifier. And a DOI is a number that helps people to find exactly where this information is on the internet or in a database. Because information is always changing on the internet, changing its location, if you just give a URL address two years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, certainly the URL will probably be changed or the information could be gone. DOI, Digital Object Identifier, is a way that publishers guarantee that as long as you have that number, you can find it at that number in the future. So you will, see, you will see DOIs in all modern publications, especially if you're using the database interface to see them. And when you put them inside of your paper, then you will basically follow the same rules as the citation rule. DOIs are mostly used in the reference list, not in the citations, but they can be used in citations if that's all the information you have, for example. Okay, so that covers our MLA citations, that is inside the text of the citations, and I think uh, you get the idea. The most important point to remember is the MLA and APA are very different. And again, these are different from other styles, and every journal to be different in what they want. You need to follow that journal. If you're doing a dissertation or a thesis, probably your school is following either MLA or APA. When you submit a paper, if you're not quite sure of the journal's rules, or sometimes the journals have rules but they're not very detailed, then see which one it follows most. Is it more like MLA or is it more like APA? And choose that one to follow for your research paper. The more you stick to it, the more clear you make it, the easier your path to getting your paper accepted will be. Okay, good luck.